to Chris Farms on Extension Services, alias Chris Farm Nigeria. This is Mr. Chris. I am on the site where my clients sent me to come. And one thing, we don't measure their clients' names and we don't measure the location of those places because of the security of the client. Because their security is our optimum priority. We want to protect all our customers, irrespective of the country, irrespective of the state we go to. All we need to do is to deliver the right information that is on site, relating it to the client so that the client will be at the same page with us. And oftentimes when we are doing a job for a client, we do a video for the client, irrespective of where the person is in the marketplace, in the office, in the uh, in, in different locations, in a party, in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, it's not even our business. All we need to do is to give the customer the right information, what is happening on the site, right up. So welcome to Chris Thompson Extension Service once again. I'm Mr. Chris. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to... Uh, be notified each time we upload a new video. You'll be watching our YouTube channel day in, day out. You know, we are learning every day on our site. You don't want to subscribe. Please subscribe. Ask for our military. Let our military move to the permanent site. Thank you very much because I believe today you are subscribing. Also, click on the notification button to be notified each time we upload a new video. Give us a thumbs up in any of our video, please. And give us a uh, comment if there is something you want to comment, you want to talk about it. No problem. So, welcome to this side. This side, we want to talk about, we want to do some amendment on the building. And I uh, want to bring the client to know we are not the person that built this place. We just came, they contracted us to come and see what is wrong with the site so that we can make some adjustment before the poultry house will commence. This is a poultry house precisely, and the person is using galvanized pipe. If you have watched through our YouTube channel, you believe with me that galvanized pipe have done more harm than good because there are several projects that we use galvanized pipe for, and at the long run, there is a devastation, there is catastrophic on those pipes. Like currently, in February this year, there was a hurricane when I came to Nigeria that swept through the country, and so many people's property was destroyed, especially those that used galvanized pipe to do their work. Me is also, I was also a victim. I had a site in Moe, not in Moe, we don't measure uh, location, around Moe houses. We are building uh, a greenhouse over, uh, let's say, 10 to 15,000 capacity snail greenhouse. We use galvanized pipe. We are done with the job. We use green, we use uh, shading net. We have completed the job. During that February hurricane wind, the wind blows down the whole structure and everything collapsed. And that thing cost us millions of naira to rehabilitate it and bring it back to standard. So because of that, we often encourage our clients, irrespective of whatever they are doing, there is need for them to use pillar block or casted wall or casted pillars to erect their building. Because you don't put your trust, no longer don't put your trust or don't put your hope on galvanized pipe because when you finish building and spend a lot of money hundreds of thousands millions to build a place you use your roof you use anything at the long run if there is a severe wind that comes it brings everything down and if it brings everything down on your investment you lose a lot of millions because before you finish doing a roof now no matter how it is you must have spent one to two million naira to do a roof so once we finish doing that and the thing just scatter or they, it broke down as a result of wind or anything you're going to go a very, you have a great loss. So as a result of that, I do encourage people, if you know you want to use galvanized pipe, one, one thing is that you must use galvanized pipes that are thick. Galvanized pipe will have thick ones, will have lights, will have 1.5, will have uh, 2 mm, will have 3 mm, why will we have 4 mm? So if you must use galvanized pipe, use a strong one. And if you, <clears throat> and if you are using the strong one, work with your spacing ensure that your spacing is not much if it is much the pressure or the weight will be too much it will break down i once even said that if there is a way i can even speak to this chinese company that is producing this galvanized pipe with the way they are producing the galvanized pipe nowadays it's very light if we get to a time in nigeria whereby they will import a uh, galvanized pipe that zinc will be stronger than because nowadays you can burn a galvanized pipe if you get it gets spoiled so please, the companies in China that are producing galvanized pipe, please stop producing the qualities of galvanized pipe so that galvanized pipe will be strong, so that you will not be destroying people's investment. Look at this one. Somebody wants to use an, uh, your galvanized pipe produced to build a house or do a roofing or a sheet. At the long run, the thing will be destroyed. Even a carport that we did, we used four inches uh, galvanized pipe to do a carport. When the wind came, it brought that thing down. So what are you, you producing galvanized pipe irrespective of the country you are? 
Do you, 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 are you trying to tell us we shouldn't use Governance 5 to do job again? Because Governance 5 will say that it is cheap. Now, if it is cheap, it is not more costly. Instead of it becoming cheap, it's costly. Every day they are increasing the price of Governance 5. And also they are reducing the quality of the Governance 5. Of which when you use it to do a job, it gets destroyed. So today I'm bringing the client to the side, making him to understand that this Governance 5 that he has used is going to fall. Not it's not falling today because you don't know when it's going to fall. By the time you put your load on it, it might fall. If I must advise, I would have encourage that you should put uh you use pillar block, casted pillar block. If you can use pillar block on the middle, it will give you a very long lifespan. That is to say, you can use it for a very long time because before anything that called casted pillar breaks or cracks. It's going to really take time. Use the 6x6 or use uh, the 7x7 seven seven ring to do the pillar. Do a pillar work from here at the middle between this galvanized pipe and another galvanized pipe. You do a pillar work here. If you felt that casting a pillar work on this galvanized pipe will be very expensive on this place to be a support for these two galvanized pipes, if it's going to be expensive, you can as well go on with your galvanized pipe. But me, I prescribe specifically you should use casted pillars here in order to support the strength of this galvanizer so that the weight of the view of the roofing will less rest on the casted pillar and that of the galvanized pipe but should in case you felt that you don't want to use uh, you don't want to use a uh, casted pillar you should buy more of this galvanized pipe you need about 13 lengths of this galvanized pipe you are going to be putting one in from this uh, galvanized pipe to this galvanized pipe at the middle of it, you are going to be putting one galvanized pipe each. You put one here, one here, one here, one here. I've calculated the galvanized pipe you're going to be using. You are going to be using 13 lengths of, it is three inches, right? You are going to be using 13 lengths of three inches galvanized pipe around this building so that when you build, when you do your roofing, your roofing can stay. It will not collapse on it. That is the first pointer. You are either using a galvanized pipe or you are using a pillar block. This is complete reporting on the site I came to supervise and for me to, because they are buying cages from us and uh, I told them to come, they started to come here to come and see how to do the cages, the caging system for them. So on the aspect of building, I believe I've, I've made this, this is clear, very clear enough so that your building and your investment will not go down the dream so that you will not catch your village people wind, shall we that? This is what you need to do reinforce your building because what i'm seeing here if we should do continue like this your building is going to collapse so reinforce your building with pillars if you don't want to use pillars you buy 13 lengths of three inches galvanized pipe to run this place hold through again so that and um, do the pillar uh, the casted one below to hold the building firm that is on the building so for those that are building poultry house and want to go into caging system if you want to do cage, there is need for you to understand that cages have different sizes, different uh, different length. Like if you are going for 96 bed capacity, their pit should be 1.8 meters. If you are going for 120 capacity, your pit should be 2 meters or 2.2 meters wide. 1.8 meters wide if it is 96 bed capacity. One, uh, 2 meters wide or 2.2 meters, uh, 2.1 meters wide if it is uh, 120 capacity. If you are going for 128 capacity, which is on the four tiers, your pit system should be 2.2 meter wide. While you can do your your walkway, depending on how big you want your uh, port, uh, your walkway should be. For this, this has already been constructed. I only came here to make some adjustment. Now coming to the side, you want to put cage. If you flood through this, if you flood this place now, it's going to be very difficult for you to handle it. It's going to be very difficult for you to uh, do your walkway, do your different things. It's very difficult for you to do that. So as a result of that, there will be need for you to do a complete flow system. Now, if you decide to flood this whole place now, it's going to be difficult for you to pass the dogs when the cages are placed on the floor, floor system. I don't know what you want to do. Looking at the environment, actually, it's a residential area. It's close to the market. That is why when you want to set up a farm, you need to contact or contact the pro uh, professional in the field who is going to give you an advice. If I am, if I was being notified, if I before you start building this structure, I wouldn't have allowed you to do poultry in this place because this place is 
a residential area or close to the market. So as a result of that, the smell that will be oozing out from here is going to cause your neighbors to start disturbing you. Let's say from now to 15 years time, you might have problem in this place. That is the gospel truth because of the rate of development and the location. In less than 15 years time, your neighbors will start disturbing you, telling you that the poultry uh, farming you're doing here is disturbing them. The smell is too much because you can see them here. You can even see buildings all around. So you should, in case you want to go into poultry farming, there is need for you to go to the village where there is no much land. Even when you go there, Seth, the lands are cheaper for you to buy. And when you're buying, going to poultry farming, there's a lot of, uh, you need large acres of land. You need, you want to go into commercial poultry farming. You need a minimum of one acre so that when you start, uh, when you start, uh, if your business is growing, you can easily expand. If you can get up to one acre, two acre, three acre for your poultry farm business, it's a good one. Then for you, for since the build, since the deed has already been done, all I need to do is to bring corrective measures to the site. Currently now, because of the location, there will be need for you to do a flow through system in your poultry pen in order to control smell. Flow through system means you flushing through the, uh, uh, to making a gutter or a cover where the dung will be flowing down to. When it flows down there, you will use a manure dryer to uh, produce manure, to dry the manure, to reduce the smell of, uh, of, your, of your poultry farm. For the same way I'm still advising people that already have poultry farm in a residential area that are looking for a way to calm down the smell, you need to buy a manure dryer. If you look to our YouTube channel, we have manure dryer that produce, that help you to dry manure and to reduce the smell, the poultry smell in your farm. Then, but even though you are using, please don't quote me wrong, even though you are using manure dryer, it does not eradicate the smell totally. Rather, it's going to bring the smell down because it's going to be dry the manure for you and you can be bagging and what be selling. So coming back to the side, I want to bring, I want to do the partitions for this uh, poultry pen. This place, I've already measured it. It's an L-shaped building. And um, let me, let me just uh, bring out the side. This is an l shape. Down this way, down there is an L shaped uh, structure. The length, the highest length is this way from here to here. We are having 12.6 meters long. Uh, from here, we are having, uh, we are having, uh, sorry, please, from here to where will I start from now? Okay, from here to here, this first place will have 11.45 meters long. From here to here, we have 12.6 meter long. From there to there, the L there, we have 9 meters. This other one, there we have, I uh, don't know, we didn't measure there. We didn't measure from there to here. No, we didn't measure here. But we measured from there to here, we got 16.5 meters long. While from that end to this end, we measured the uh, 22.35 meters long. So as a result of that, we are going to be doing a, a short uh, arrangement for the site. Uh, you see this place here, we are going to be closing it up straight up from this place to that. We are closing it from here up will be for uh, probably where you put your chicks. Let's go to that place, please. here you see this place here from this place down to this place will be closed off when you close it up you do the block straight up from here to here you bring it to the roof close it so that the your your, your uh, let me say diseases diseases will not flow from here to this place diseases will not come from here to this place reason being that here you want to use for your I want to use here for your layers. You want to use here for layers. Here, why right here? We'll be using it for boilers. Uh, boilers, maybe small boilers, or should in case there is any of the 
players that have issue, maybe we make two legs or any kind of thing. You want to isolate the bed, you can take it from here and put it here. If there is data, but if there is no bed here, you can wear your layers and um, your boilers during festive periods to stress. But it's not going to accommodate much like 200, 100, or 100 to 200 feet you can stay here. So we're going to partition here, close it up for holding of your boiler bed. Or if this is not the festive period, because boilers are red in festive period in Nigeria, if you don't want to go into commercial purposes, you just wear them for festive period for your personal use or you want to sell like 200, 100 to 200, you can wear them here. Then you close up here for that. From here to here is specifically designed for your layers bed. And during the time when there is no, uh, you're not running the boilers, any of your chicks. Uh, any of your beds that develop one disease or the other, you want to isolate them, you pick it from here, you bring it here to keep. So from here to here, we have, have designed this place so that here can be on the three rows in order to accommodate more beds. For now, I cannot tell the total number of uh, uh, cases that you really need. I'm going to go home and calculate it so that you know the total bed, the, the total case you'll be needing here and total beds that this place can accommodate. But I want to do the uh, partition for you. Now, on the partition, on the partition, when you come into a building or you come into a farm, there should be a place you used to, at least you can come in, where you can stand before you can start doing anything. So because of that, from this place, from your wall there, to this place is two meters. This two meter will be for your entrance where you can store your air, where you can move around. These are these two place, these two meters from that wall to this place. You are not going to dig anything. It's going to be your walkway. From here to here shall be your walkway. Then this is a partition for the building. I just partition the place. From here to here, we have one point something meter. Why here is for the block work. The block you are going to do is here. So this place, the bricklayer that is coming is going to do this line that I have done here. He's going to do it from here. That is doing from here down. When you get to that place, I'm going to leave 1.5 meter away from the wall. From here, 1.2 meters away from the wall. From here to that place, where that seat is, that is where the cages will be. Then the this dispersing system is like this. From here to here, 1.3. I'll be 1.4. Then here is your walkway, six inches. From here to here, where that one is the walkway, from here to here will become the pit. From here to here is two, two meters. No, I use uh, 1.8, I beg your pardon. From here to here is 1.8. Here is your pit. We, are one, we did 96 bed capacity for you. The spacing for 96 bed capacity. From here to here is 1.6. Then here is your walk, block walk. This place is your block walk. Then from here to here is your walkway where you walk through because there is a pit here. Here is a walkway. Here is where you put your lay your blocks. Then from here to here is your cage 1.6, 1. 1. 1.8 meters. From here to here is 1.8 meters. From here to here is 1.6. Your walkway, they will measure it again. From here to here, we did 1.6 for your walkway from here to here. Zero to one point six. Please let's make sure it's gonna be sure of it again. Sorry. But I've done that before. Sorry. We're going to do it so that we'll be sure of what we did again. When I do it, I will remember. Sorry, one point four. The walkway is one point four from here to here is one point four. Why the pit is 1.8 from first one to here is the pit 1.8. This is your block wall 1.4 from here to here 1.4, which is your walkway. This is your block wall from here to here again is 1.8 for your pit. This is your block wall from here to here is 1.4. This is your walkway. This is your block from here to here is your pit. That is 1.8. Why from here to here is your block wall. Here becomes your uh, your walkway. So your walkway goes like this, straight up like this, down to this place. Another walkway. Here is a pit. You go from here again. Here is a pit. You go from here again. 
this is your walkway again. This is the pit. This is the walkway. You go from here again. This is the pit. And this place is your walkway. So that is how it is. I've been able to map up the land for you. So I will now do uh I will now do the calculation to know how many pages is going to be here. So in case there is anything again that is needed to be done, you need to correct it. Then that place there is a bend here. They said they want to do something like a water tank or something like that. Let's come to this place. There is a bend here. There is an L shape here. Probably they said they want to do something like water here or something. This place will not work because of the spacing. So therefore, we are going to remove this block. We are going to remove it. Then take the length from here down to that place to get the balance. When we get the uh, length, we can use it for our changes. We are going to correct this thing there. We are going to remove the air, remove this block, add it up again straight up to that place. Then the water something, we can find another place to do the water. We can put the water tank there. That place, this tank, is, we can put the water there. The where the where the city tank is, we can put the water there. We can do your borehole there. We can put the water there. So this place, this tank is. You can put your tank tank here. You can drill your borehole there. From there, you can connect water to the building, connect water to the pit. So these are all that we need to do that we've done. So in case there is any question, the client can call out, call on me. You can reach out to me at any time. Remember, our number is 080-3692-5718. If you are in Nigeria, if you are not in Nigeria, you will write us with our country code plus 23480-3692-5718. We are into general farm setup. Poultry farm setup, piggy farm setup, fish farm setup, snake farm setup, anything that is called farm setup, that is what we do. So if you want to get any kind of machine for poultry, any kind of machine for fishery, we do that. But in case you want to ship anything that is called Nigeria food to any part of the world you are, any part of the world you are, we ship African food to any part of the world you are, ranging from snail, fresh, dry, crayfish, even okazi, ugu, dry ugu, kasa, anything you want, gari, egusi, or bolo, anything that we eat in Nigeria, irrespective of the country you are, any part of the world you are, just tell me this is what you want, I will deliver it to doorstep to you. So we do export, we do import, we do farm setup, anything agriculture, we specialize in agriculture. You want to start up a business on agricultural line, and you need a business plan and feasibility study, you want to give to a company to finance it, a financial institute to fund it for you, or you want to go in for a grant. Why not? We are specialists when it comes to anything that has to do with agriculture. Log into our website at www.streetfarmnigeria.com. We are in all the social networks. All you just need to do is to type in Chris Farm Nigeria. Straight up, you will see us. We are in WhatsApp. We are in, uh, we are in Instagram. We are in YouTube. The same way you are watching me, which I know you are subscribing straight up. Please subscribe and, add, and uh, promote our ministry to the, to the next time. Share our videos to different places. It's certain that it has educated you or you like it. Please, why not? If you want to go into anything that has to do with farm setup, please reach out to us. Our number remains 080-3692-5718. And if you're not in Nigeria, remember to put our country code plus 23480-3692-5718. Mind you, this is a report I'm giving to a client. The client name is not mentioned. The state it is, is not mentioned. The location is not mentioned because the client security is our ultimate priority. So we don't bring that down to any standard. So irrespective of the country, you are covered the whole country nigeria so anywhere you want us to do your job for you we'll do that for you thank you once again for choosing chris from nigeria always know that your satisfaction is our optimum desire thank you and do have a blessed day